Save 10% with my code BOBBY10 on raw, organic, grass-fed and grass-finished freeze-dried organ meats from Grassland Nutrition. Link in the description box. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, brand new video by the channel Towards Eternity. How is Prophet Muhammad mentioned in the 4000 year old book? of Hinduism. No, this is not an old video of Dr. Zucker Naik showing us old Hindu scriptures and reciting them perfectly. No, this time, as I said, it is about the channel Towards Eternity, which is doing a tremendous job on Muslim convert stories and other Islamic content. Guys, before we start the video, just do me the quick favor. If you enjoy the content, please leave us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed already, please do so. With no further ado, let's have a look. It is stated in the scriptures of some ancient religions that Muhammad, peace be upon him, will come. Almost all of us have heard news related to him in the Torah, the Psalms, the Bible, or have come across it somewhere. But apart from them, there is similar news. For example, in the scriptures of Hinduism and Zoroastrianism. Do not underestimate Hinduism because it is the world's third largest religion. Considering that it has yes, almost 1.2 billion followers, approximately- This is why Islam is of course a threat within India and Muslims are persecuted because Islam itself is a threat to the caste system within India. Islam is seen as something that goes directly against the culture of India. Of course, it is fear there, but nevertheless, he is correct. He 1.2 billion followers are Hindu. 15% of the world's population believes in this religion. Wow. Therefore, it is wonderful to have such news in such a religion. There is some news that I think you will be very much surprised by. You know, Muhammad, peace be upon him, is mentioned with his characteristics, traits, and qualities that distinguish him from others. Even his name, his father's name, the name of the religion where he was born, and his different characteristics are mentioned. When a person first hears this, he is surprised and says, how come? Frankly, I was also surprised when I researched the issue. In other words, a lot of the time has been spent on this issue. There is a lot of research done by professors, and there are even written books on it. It is important because one, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, could not have traveled back in time and written himself in those texts. He could Fair not enough, have given yeah. information about himself. Two, no human being can give information about a person to come more than a thousand years after him. It is something impossible. So it is definite proof of his prophethood, peace be upon him. Of course, the following question comes to mind. Okay, what you say is fine and good, but are you saying that Hinduism and Zoroastrianism are based on the basic fundamental truths like in Christianity and Judaism? No, I do not claim that the founders of these religions were prophets. I cannot make such a claim because there is no verse or hadith about it. But it is possible because we all know that thousands of sure. prophets came... I heard similar claims about Buddha and Buddha potentially being a prophet. But of course, ultimately, we will never know. Before Prophet Muhammad, know. peace be upon him. It is a separate issue, but irrespective of who says it in these texts, if we see this news in one part, that part of the text is definite. Even if there are superstitions in other parts of the text, as Zarathustra or someone else may have received the revelation. That is the part that interests us. So, sure, of course, and this wouldn't even go against Islam because Islam does not claim that there couldn't be partial truths within other religions. Even from an Islamic perspective, within the Bible, you will find plenty of truths. However, the ultimate truth would be reserved for Islam. Let's take a look at such news in the texts of Hinduism in this video. Okay, let's go. According to estimates, Hinduism was founded between 2300 and 1500 BC. It is the most common religion in India and around India now. Which most makes of it the an ethnocentric of movement as well. Are Indians. The yes. general name of their sacred texts is Shruti, which means what is heard in Sanskrit. They divide this text into three, Vedas, Puranas, and Upanishads. It's There's quite amazing to see because even back in the day in the 60s or 70s, when a lot of outpouring happened coming from India, going over to the United States, and there you saw plenty of so-called self-proclaimed New Age gurus like Alan Watts and what not. But what is hilarious about this is that those Westerners didn't become Hindu themselves. They didn't become Buddhist either. They took 
certain teachings from Buddhism, Zen Buddhism, and Hinduism and mixed them together. They simply took what is beneficial to their ideology, which then in turn created the New Age movement. That being said, Hinduism itself is very ethnocentric, and this is why you see little to no Westerners nowadays converting to pure Hinduism. There's also Brahman Granth, which is an explanation of them, but they do not regard it as divine revelation. Their clergy persons like are called Pandits, said, right? and each piece of their text is called a mantra. They are in the Sanskrit language. This language is one of the least known languages in the world. If I remember correctly, the last time I checked, it was stated that only about 50,000 people knew it. In these wow. texts, there are places in which very clear glad tidings about Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, are given. We will discuss only a few of them here. The first one is as follows. The following is stated in a part of the Bhavishya Purana. At that time, a spiritual educator known as Muhammad arose among Malikas with his friends. So the name Muhammad okay. is mentioned very He's clearly. Precise, what else? Yeah. It is said that he will be a spiritual educator. Nobody has any doubts about this characteristic. Even those who do not believe in him admit that he has this characteristic. Apart from that, Absolutely, the term Malikas. man. We talked about this. Even Jews that are not Muslim, obviously they are Jews, they still would admit that Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him, was a prophet indeed, without accepting him. He will come from someone other than Hindus. Why? What would Hindus have normally said if they had written it for themselves? They would have said, he will come from among us, right? Let him come and strengthen us. But on the contrary, the name Muhammad is mentioned, and it is said that he will come from a foreign country. In other words, he will not be one of them is a remarkable detail. Of course, it is not the it only interesting is, detail. Because there is also some talking about the Jews. The Jews assumed that there will be another prophet coming. However, they thought that this prophet must be Jewish by default. And this is where they went wrong. And this is why they did not accept Islam. The majority of them did not accept Islam. But here it is fascinating to see that those people, those Hindus, apparently in their own scriptures said that there will be a prophet, but he will be not amongst them. Some other strange news. The second one is as follows. A little further from the previous part, in Shalokas, between mantras 10 and 27, someone named Muhammad who will come in the future is mentioned, which you see on the screen right now. His name is mentioned several times. Towards the end of this section, we see the following statements. My followers will be circumcised, without braids, without beards, who will make a revolution, call to worshipping aloud, and assimilate all religions. They will eat animals without performing elaborate Hindu rituals. So this couldn't be any more precise. This is absolutely mind-boggling, man. My followers will be circumcised without braids, with beards, who make a revolution, which they did, of course, call to worshipping aloud, which is, of course, the Adan, and assimilate all religions, which they did as well, because the claim of Islam is, of course, that it came for all nations. They will eat animals without performing elaborate Hindu rituals. Moreover, they will eat animals, because in many branches of Hinduism, you have to be a vegetarian. This couldn't be more precise, and this is truly mind-blowing. Extraordinary term is used in a place further on. They will be known as Musaman, and no they will deny way, the false man. religion. Now I have goosebumps. Yes, Truly, it is remarkable. Is amazing. But let's proceed no without way. breaking the order. Apart from directly what? indicating the name Muhammad, peace this be upon him, some than of his anything characteristics that Dr. Found. him are mentioned. What is stated? What is going Bearded, on? Without braids. Guys, on that note, I have to interrupt again. Excuse me here, but this is truly mind-blowing. If you have any details, any links rather, to those scriptures, please post them in the comment section. I would really love to read them myself. Sized. Now, I'll stop here and ask, if I were someone who wanted to object, I mean, if I were watching the video from the beginning just to oppose, I would object at this point. Bearded and without braids. It is a very general term. However, Not among truly, all man. those characteristics, circumcision is emphasized. Frankly, no one can try to interpret it differently, especially if it is stated that the person mentioned will do a revolutionary job. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, changed the society he was in radically, which makes all the pieces click which into the place. Revolution, then sure. the following is stated. The ones who call to worshipping aloud. That is, they will recite something to invite people to worship. Like what? Like Adan. The Adan. Just a minute. Isn't the thing mentioned here, Adan? There was also this phrase. They will eat animals without performing elaborate Hindu rituals. 
There's something we just strange said here. Yes, we do not perform elaborate rituals like the Hindus while eating meat. In other words, we say Bismillah is a deed of worship, but it is not the strange detail. The strange thing is this. In the Hindu text, a society is described as eating meat. Why do you think it's strange? Eating meat is not allowed in Hinduism. As I said, Hinduism vegetarians. leads people to a kind of diet. There is a sign in that statement, too, that this person will come from a different country, not from Hindus. Wow. We will see where that country is with a strange sign in one of the mantras. The most important one is this. They will be known as Musalman. <laughs> well, there's no need to explain it. Please the pieces be more of the puzzle keep coming I don't together. Understand. The third one is what as does follows. It mean? In one part of the Rig Veda, the following is stated. Truthful and truth-loving, extremely intelligent, strong and generous Mamach, who is the truthful and truth-loving, extremely wise, powerful and generous, has favored me with his words. He, the son of the all-powerful, possessing all good attributes, the mercy for the worlds, has become famous with 10,000 companions. The word Mamach here is remarkable because the word is derived from the root Mach in the Hindu language, which means to praise, to glorify. When the prefix Ma, which adds a passive meaning, is added, it becomes Mamach. Its translation turns out to be the word praised. The, the Arabic praised equivalent of this name is Muhammad. In addition, adjectives such as truthful, truth-loving, extremely intelligent, strong, and generous are mentioned here. They are seen in Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, throughout his life, with the unanimous agreement of his friends and enemies. And they are the attributes through which he is praised. In addition, remember that there was a phrase, the mercy for the worlds, in the text, which reminds us of a famous title of Muhammad, peace be he's upon him. Verse 107 the of the worlds. chapter of al -Anbiya. We sent thee not but as a mercy for all creatures. Another important right. detail, being famous with 10,000 people. Yes, he returned to Mecca, his homeland from where he was forced to emigrate in 630 with 10,000 of his companions. He returned and conquered Mecca with his companions who were ready to sacrifice their lives for him. I hope things are clear so far. There are two other parts that I find Actually, interesting. Shockingly the fourth clear, one is as friends. follows. Couldn't be any clearer. The age of Kali is mentioned in Hindu texts. Yeah, it is possible scary. to find a detailed definition of it in different places. In short, a period when every virtue disappears. People turn away from religion. Good books are destroyed. Kali Yuga. Many people believe that we are now in Kali Yuga, which would be the equivalent of the end times. Ritual deterioration and depression occur. Right. An event that will take place towards Walk the around. end of this period is mentioned. It is described as follows in chapter 24 of Vishnu Purana. When the practices taught by the Vedas in the institutes of law shall nearly have ceased, and the close of the Kali age shall be nigh, a portion of that divine being who exists of his own spiritual nature in the character of Brahma, and who is the beginning and the end, and who comprehends all things, shall descend upon the earth. Some details about that person are mentioned. He will be born in the family of Vishnu Yasas, an eminent Brahman of Sambala village as Kalki, endowed with the eight superhuman faculties. The following is stated a little further. He will then re-establish righteousness upon earth at the end of the Kali age, which we have just mentioned. The minds of those who live shall be awakened and shall be as clear as crystal. Now, let's summarize this part in general terms and try to understand it. An age of Kali is mentioned. According to what is told, in a period when the rules and laws taught by Vedas through religious texts and practices are abandoned, a person will emerge. Some traits of this person are mentioned to be recognized. He is said to be born in a region known as Shambhala. It is extraordinary that the meaning of Shambhala in Sanskrit means house of trust, house of peace. When we look at the Arabic equivalent of this name, it introduces us to a region that is not very unfamiliar to us. The city of Mecca is known by the name Al-Balad Al-Amin. Can it not be a coincidence, dear? If we look at the other phrase next to it, it doesn't seem so. Another detail, the family he will be born in is mentioned, in the family of Vishnu Yasas. Now let's have a look at this name. Isn't Vishnu a name of a god according to them? So what does Vishnu Yasas mean? It means servant of God. When we translate this name into Arabic, we see the name Abdullah, Abdullah, which means servant of Allah. Wasn't the name of the father of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, also Abdullah? Exactly at a time reported in the text, in the dark age of ignorance, and exactly in the area and the family that is reported, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, appeared and reestablished righteousness on earth. As is stated in the text, he led people to a serious awakening. With religion, he preached ethics, law, social norms, spirituality, and in many other fields, he taught people righteousness and enlightened their minds. He brought out his community, praised by volumes of books, like the companions of the prophet, peace be upon him, from the worst form of darkness to light. Finally, we move on to the fifth part. 
In the last part, we will discuss something from Samaveda, in which there is some different news. Only one of them is enough. The following is stated in the text. I think nothing Amman can acquired top the religious really laws got. from his lord. This religious law is full of wisdom. I receive light from him just as from the sun. Ahmad acquired religious law from his lord. The name Ahmad is mentioned so clearly, was wrong. it is one of the names of the messenger of Allah, <laughs> Ahmad. Then it is stated that he acquired Ahmad, religious right? rules from his lord, and that's exactly what a holy book and religion mean. As we yep. approach the end, it is useful to remind the following once again. We do not claim that Hinduism is essentially based on revelation. We cannot do so. That is, we do not have a verse or a hadith as evidence to prove that. Therefore, it is not possible to say that. But we also know that thousands of prophets came before Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Some of them were yes. given scriptures and religious texts, and they either disappeared or were distorted over time. So if the texts of Hinduism, namely Vedas, Puranas, and Upanishads, are really based on a divine revelation, they have already been distorted. However, their distortion does not mean that every part of them has been distorted. For example, the Bible has been distorted, but there are yep. places in it that mention our prophet, sense. peace be upon him. So what should we do? What does a logical person say when he sees this? He says, okay, even if Use these books have been distorted, no one can distort them in a way that will give news about the future. Think about it. You distort something, or your distortion causes something that gives correct information about the future. It would be nonsensical. It wouldn't be possible. That is, even if the text itself has been completely distorted, even if the words have been changed, that news itself is true. The clergy persons of Hinduism won't put such knowledge in their books themselves because this information proves that Islam is the truth. They can't give information about the future anyway. It is nonsense. We can think of the same about these texts. In other words, whether these texts were divine revelation or not, at the time when they were first written, we all know that nobody could give information about Muhammad, peace be upon him, and the future in such detail. To mention his name, use an expression that means his name, his father's name, and mention so many different details, including him being circumcised. So, coincidence, dear. Is it possible to say that? When we look at the parts we have talked about in general, they are proofs for the authenticity of Islam. Isn't this interesting? It says Muhammad somewhere, Ahmad somewhere else, and Mama elsewhere yet. That name indicates exactly the name Muhammad in terms of meaning. In other words, we have such a prophet that even his name proves his prophethood. Allah shows wow. people dozens, maybe hundreds of proofs, so they may believe in the prophets he sent. We may know very few of them, but a prophet emerged in every era. He sent revelation and evidence, one of which we have just talked about. We talked about some of them. I haven't conveyed all of them to you, but there are as many or even more signs than the ones mentioned above in the Hindu texts. I sincerely and wholeheartedly believe that as time goes on, we will see additional pieces of evidence and we will encounter new findings. And of course, we will also encounter those who see these findings and close their eyes to the truth after seeing it. As always. Anyway, follow us. See you in the next video. All right, guys, and this is it for today's absolutely mind-boggling video. I have to say that I heard many claims about Hindu scriptures, predominantly coming from Dr. Zucker Naik. However, nothing has been so detailed as this one right here, or at least I haven't heard it yet. My followers will be circumcised without braids, with beards who make a revolution called to worshipping aloud and assimilate all religions they will eat animals without performing elaborate Hindu rituals. All the other texts mentioned here in this video were amazing, surely, but nothing has been so precise, so concise as this text here. This truly convinced me and usually I'm extremely critical when it comes down to claims about other religions than Islam pointing towards Islam because I come from an Orthodox Christian background and I heard many claims of other scriptures pointing towards the crucifixion of Jesus. For example, you can always twist and turn certain words. Nevertheless, you cannot twist those words down here. Why would they be circumcised? If you think about the Sikhi religion that came out of India during the time of the Islamic Empire, those guys were opposed to circumcision. Within Hinduism, you have absolutely nobody getting circumcised either. So this is so precise that it couldn't be any 
any clearer. But to be fair, I would love to hear from my Hindu viewers what you guys think about this subject. I know we just have a handful of Hindus watching. Guys, do me the favor and share the video with your friends. Then I invite you to discuss with me. I would really love to hear your perspective on those texts. Moreover, if you have access to those texts with translation, please post them in the comment section below as well so we can see them ourselves and discuss further. All right, guys, but this is it for today's video. If you liked it, leave a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you want to support this channel via Patreon, all the links are in the description box below. Thank you so much for your ongoing support, guys. As always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.